Hi everyone, so today I wanted to discuss what supplements I take and recommend as a vegan, but before we get into that, I have a special announcement. Veg Animation has some new t-shirt designs. Oh, <laughs> ドクン、ピーク。<laughs> All right, so there's a common misconception that vegans have to take a ton of supplements to be healthy. A lot of people think that a vegan diet is deficient in tons of nutrients and vegans have to live off of supplements. That's not true. I've been vegan for 10 years. I'm not dead yet, clearly, and uh, during the time I've been vegan, I've stayed healthy, and uh, I've only ever taken uh, two to three supplements consistently. And uh, the supplements I'm about to uh, mention here, pretty much everyone should be taking them. It's very difficult to get some of these nutrients on, a, on any diet, uh, whether you eat meat or not. And on top of that, there are some carnivore YouTubers who uh, actually take the same supplements I'm taking, like Frank Tafano. And the first supplement I would recommend to anyone following a plant-based diet is, of course, B12. I'm sure most of you have heard of B12 before. It's uh, the vitamin everyone makes fun of vegans for, like, oh, vegans can't get B12, your diet sucks. Uh, well, no, you can just take a supplement or eat fortified foods. It's quite easy. This is the supplement that I take personally. It's a uh, B12 sublingual supplement. So the way this works is you just untwist the cap, you use the eyedropper, get a bunch of B12 in here. It's a nice ruby red color. You squirt it underneath your tongue, and then it's basically absorbed uh, through the skin in your mouth. Now, you don't actually have to take a supplement like this. You can just take cyanocobalamin tablets. That works fine for most people. It's a much cheaper type of supplement too, but if you have absorption issues, you might want to take a methylcobalamin supplement or a methylcobalamin uh, sublingual supplement. Now, uh, the reason B12 is so important is because if you don't get enough of it, uh, you can actually die, and B12 uh, deficiencies can be quite serious. B12 is necessary for the health of your brain, nervous system, it has a lot of functions in your body. So, uh, if you are B12 deficient, you could run into some serious, serious problems, and uh, people on plant-based diets, particularly vegans, are especially susceptible to B12 deficiencies because there aren't a lot of foods that naturally contain uh, B12 other than animal products. So, you either have to eat fortified foods like plant-based milks, a lot of mock meats are also fortified in B12, or take a supplement. Um, I would always recommend just taking a supplement anyway because it's such an important uh, vitamin that if you're deficient in it, again, you can run into some really serious problems down the road. So I would always take a supplement even if you are eating fortified foods. And um, really everyone, even if you're not vegan, uh, should be taking a B12 supplement, especially if you're getting older. As you age, you have a uh, less of an ability to absorb B12 and you do start to see uh, higher rates of B12 deficiencies in the elderly. So. Really, because uh, B12 is such an important vitamin, everyone should be taking it, especially as you're getting older. So B12, um, especially if you're vegan, but really everyone should be taking it. And the next supplement I would recommend is vitamin D. So this is the supplement that I take right here. It's a vegan vitamin D3 supplement. A lot of people think that vegans can't get uh, vitamin D3. Well, they can. Uh, there are certain plants that produce D3. Uh, this is made from lichen, which is a type of fungus. 
technically fungi aren't plants, but I'm not, not going to get into all that. Um, but vitamin D3, really important for a number of bodily functions, um, including bone health. So you definitely want to make sure you take D3 and uh, maintain adequate levels. Both vitamin D2 and D3 are perfectly adequate for maintaining healthy uh, vitamin D levels. So um, you don't have to take a D3 supplement. You can just take a D2 supplement. Um, and uh, everyone should be taking this, not just vegans. Uh, vitamin D deficiency rates are extraordinarily high. Uh, in the U.S., nearly half of, of U.S. adults are vitamin D deficient, with the highest deficiency rate seen in blacks at over 80%. So if you have a darker skin tone and uh, if you don't have access to uh, much sunlight, it's especially important to make sure you're getting enough uh, vitamin D. Um, also, uh, you really want to make sure you're getting vitamin D uh, either through food or a supplement. Uh, sunlight isn't really a reliable way to get vitamin D. Um, there's a lot of things that can uh, affect vitamin D production in your body. Age is a really significant factor, how dark your skin is. So for everyone, you really want to take a vitamin D supplement. There really aren't many uh, adequate food sources of vitamin D. Um, the only real food source of vitamin D is from fish. Um, and you have to eat a lot of fish to get an adequate supply of vitamin D. Um, this, uh, this supplement, just per pill, it has 1,000 IUs. Uh, typically, you want to get 2,000 IUs of vitamin D per day. It's not really practical to eat enough fish to meet that vitamin D requirement every single day. And there's a number of health issues with fish. I'm not going to get into that right now because that's not the point of this video. Um, dare, a lot of people think dairy is also a source of vitamin D. It's actually not. The only reason dairy has an appreciable source of vitamin D is because it's fortified with vitamin D. So they actually add a vitamin D supplement into dairy products. Uh, so if you want to get vitamin D, uh, you probably want to skip fish and dairy. Just take a supplement. It's a lot easier, much more reliable source. Everyone should be taking this, not just vegans. Um, so yeah, this isn't just a vegan thing. Everyone should be taking a vitamin D supplement. Now, this next supplement is conditional. Not everyone has to take it. Not everyone should take it. You can get food sources of iodine, but a lot of people are iodine deficient. And recently, I've just been supplementing with iodine just because it's a little more convenient. So that's the supplement I take. Uh, it just comes in liquid form. Uh, it's kind of like the same as the B12 supplement. Uh, you just... Uh, put it a few drops in a drink you're having or uh, on your food. I usually put this in my oatmeal and eat it like that. Uh, you do want to be careful with iodine supplements because this is a very concentrated source of iodine. It's very easy to overdose. And if you overdo overdose on iodine, you can get symptoms like really fast, irregular heartbeats. So obviously that can be pretty dangerous. So make sure you're really careful with iodine supplementation. You might want to talk to a, a doctor on how to safely take this or whether you need it uh, in the first place. Now, um, there aren't many food sources of iodine. Um, you can get iodine from things like uh, potato skins. Uh, there are uh, strawberries. There are certain foods that typically have high iodine content, but it's not a very reliable source of iodine because it depends on the iodine content uh, of the soil the food is grown in. So even though typically there are some uh, plant foods like strawberries, uh, like potato skins that typically contain iodine, you can't always be sure. The only reliable sources of iodine are going to come from sea vegetables like nori. So uh, if you've ever had sushi, the seaweed wrap, that's very high in iodine. Uh, fish also tend to be pretty high in iodine, and uh, dairy. Now, dairy isn't a what I'd call natural source of iodine. The only reason uh, dairy tends to be a uh, tends to be high in iodine is because of the cleaning chemicals they use in the dairy industry. So the cleaning chemicals are high in iodine that actually gets into the milk. That's why dairy is high in iodine, and uh, iodized salt. Uh, now. Again, I recommend avoiding fish and dairy. There are some health issues with that, and also sodium as well for blood pressure. So those aren't the greatest sources of iodine. So if you're looking to increase your uh, iodine intake, I'd recommend eating sea vegetables. Um, obviously, you can eat some uh, fruits and vegetables that are typically high in iodine, but the only really reliable source is going to come from sea vegetables. You can absolutely do that. It's just, it, it can be kind of weird just managing, you know, how to incorporate, you know, seaweed into your meals. So 
I've just been taking an iodine supplement, uh, but again, you just want to be a little bit careful with this. Iodine's important for a number of things, uh, thyroid health, um, there are certain cancers that can be affected by iodine. Um, so iodine is very important. It's uh, ex the, the deficiencies are extraordinarily common in Western countries. There was uh, a recent study uh, conducted in Switzerland that, f uh, that compared micronutrient intake and status between omnivores and vegans. They found that over half, over 60% in fact, of omnivores were deficient in iodine. The deficiency rates were a bit higher in vegans at nearly 80%, and again, that's because vegans aren't eating foods like fish, uh, dairy, uh, they're probably also not eating as much iodized salt. So that's why the deficiency rates are a little higher in vegans, but really, everyone should be making sure they eat enough iodine. You don't have to take a supplement, uh, but you know, it can be a more convenient alternative and uh, it's really easy. You just put a few drops on your food and, and you're, you know, it's fine. It's a bit easier for me to take a supplement than, you know, eat seaweed every day. So I've just been taking a supplement. And that's it. Those are the only supplements I've been taking on a vegan diet. Those are the only supplements I've taken with any amount of regularity. And again, I've been vegan for 10 years now and uh, haven't died. I'm in good health. So no, you don't need to take a ton of supplements as a vegan, and the supplements I just mentioned here, uh, pretty much everyone should be taking, uh, maybe with the exception of iodine, not everyone has to take that, but uh, B12, vitamin D, uh, pretty much everyone should be taking those at least. And uh, if you like this video, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon or through my website. I have some fun and perks you may find interesting. If you're looking for clothing, then check out the Vegan Gains store. If you're looking for online coaching, then check out Quality Gains. He offers customized meal and training programs. Also, be sure to check out Veg Animation's new shirt designs. And as always, keep making those vegan gains. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.